hello guys um i don't even do youtube videos but during this coronavirus time that we have in our country i wanted to share something especially with true talents of africa students or guys in our academy but really for anybody who's on this path of playing football and will find themselves training alone and really is unsure of how to do it i know i made several mistakes when i was you know training my career understanding exactly how i should be training when i'm on my own so these are just some lessons that i will share um that i hope you can implement during this time cool so let's get right into it um most people when they come to you know train alone they make one of three mistakes the first one is they choose to juggle the ball um for a very long time assuming that that will make their touch better but I've played for a long time and I can tell you there's no point in a game where I just stopped dead in the middle of the field and started juggling the ball. It just doesn't happen. So really, it's a waste of time. Second thing is that they choose to, you know, shoot at the goal. Um, now, I'll be honest with you guys, the number of times, whether you're a midfielder or a striker, the number of times you actually get to shoot in a game is very few. Now, I understand some guys, maybe they want to work on things here and there. Um, you know, they, they want to perfect their shooting or something of that nature. Um, and that's fine. But if you're really trying to get maximum output from training by yourself, I would suggest you don't even shoot at all. The last mistake that guys make is that they run. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with running. You know, if they're in the middle of the season or uh, you feel like you need to get fitter or, you know, you you're preparing for preseason or something like that that's fine but if you want to become better at football you need to actually play football uh, I don't go swimming if I want to become a better runner for example so how do you how do you train when you're alone to become better at football I guess is the big question and I think it comes down to one simple equation to get better at football you have to perform more football actions and that I can show you how to do. So, towards the latter part of my career, um, I attribute this to a great man called Scott Wells. Um, he's a former coach of mine. Um, I actually started training more and more in squash courts. Um, but really, if you find a wall anywhere, or if you can find a wall that you can bounce the ball back off, then that's really the ideal place where you can practice your football actions more and more consistently because guys the truth is the best way to get good at something is just to do it over and over and over again so i found myself a squash court and this is how i used to train um, i would suggest you start with a dynamic warm-up you know you warm up your body um, do mostly dynamic stuff not static stretching because that won't really get you prepared to play um, and yeah, and then you get into the first part. So what I would do uh, just to warm up is I would, I have two feet. So I would use my left and right foot and just juggle the ball twice on each foot without putting the foot down between those two juggles, if that makes sense. Um, this really helped work on my balance um, and my touch. And once I got good at that, I would start to move to three per foot. After the two per foot, I did three per foot. And notice how I'm not putting the foot down in the midst of those three juggles. And once I got good at that, I did four per foot. So I would suggest doing about a hundred of each. Um, it's more like just a, a short warm up. Um, but if you get really good at it, I think you'll start to notice a difference, especially in your weaker foot which is my left foot for me. Um, and then you can actually get the, the, the program started. So here's where the actual work begins. Um, and the great thing about having a wall is it's almost as if somebody is passing the ball back to you. Um, and it comes back faster and, and you can get more touches on the ball. So here I'm just warming up my right side. Um, you can say you do 50 of them on one side, and then you transfer it to the left side and do the same thing. Um, just getting used to you know passing the ball once you're done with that I guarantee you you'll probably be sweating just a little bit um, and then you can move into 
and actually playing a pass. Now this is to replicate the exact movements you would make in a game if you were given the ball. The cone is just a reference, um, something that will help you move the ball away from, you could say, a defender's leg or just moving the ball across your body. So over here I've started with the outside of my foot and just playing with my left and right, controlling with my left, my right. And now you start to see how the repetition can really, can really help. Now we're going to do the same thing, but we're using the inside of the foot now to control the ball. I would suggest maybe counting for yourself, you know, saying, okay, I'm going to do... You can use a timer, maybe if you decide, you know, I'm going to do one minute, and you do it on your phone. Um, and then do the next one for another minute, or you can do three sets of one. Um, it really just depends on how you want to do it, but the repetition is, is key. Um, and guys, I know I've, I've made it look just a little bit easy. Uh, it's actually not, not easy at all, um, especially because uh, you know, you're using both feet, you're receiving the ball the exact same way you would in a game, um, and that's where the improvement happens. Um, so don't, don't uh, be too critical of my mistakes, um, it's not that easy. So once you're done with that, you can move on to the next part. Um, I understand that maybe you won't have two walls available, but I mean, this whole thing is really just about being creative with what you have, um, whether you just have one wall. Um, but here I'm receiving the ball from one side, I'm just taking it across my body, um, just to replicate the way I might receive the ball if I receive the ball square in a game, um, and then how I, would, how I would play the pass. Um, yeah, repetition is, is key. So once you're done with one side, you can move to the other side, receive the ball off your right, play with your left and vice versa. Um, it's really just you to be creative with it, um, different ways of receiving the ball. Um, but I'm sure now you're seeing how it would really impact you in a game or, or in a training situation to get better. Um, and also enjoy it, you know, play some music. I guarantee it will tire the hell out of you. Um, and uh, it is not easy, it's quite tiring. Uh, I tell you that for free, um, but it is more fun than than just running or trying to juggle the ball. Yeah. So here's another variation um, that I used to do. Uh, you basically take you know the ball across your body and bring it back and play the pass. Um, maybe let's say you know you're faking a shot and the defender is there, and then you end up making a pass instead, something of that nature. Um, so this is just practicing, manipulating the ball. Um, I think for any, any kind of football player, I was going to recommend it for strikers, but I think for anybody it would be good. And then guys, I know you cannot see it from the video, but I'm actually sweating at this point. And I haven't even done that much. I've been there for maybe 30 minutes at this point. Um, maybe even less, maybe like 20 minutes. Um, but it is tiring and just continuously doing those football actions it it is tiring much better than fitness though I think you can enjoy it so this is now me doing my my weaker side which is my left side um, and guys trust me this will make your weaker foot so much better you don't have to go at the same pace with both feet but um, it will really make a difference. So I'm just taking the ball across my body, bringing it back and making the pass. So um, now I'm just, you know, I had some cones, so I'm laying down, laying them down on the floor um, to help me, you know, have something to manipulate the ball around um, to just assist me with, you know, dribbling as, as, as opposed to just passing and, and receiving the ball. Um, so this is trying to also replicate a game environment where I receive the ball um, and then very quickly have to manipulate it to go in a different direction. Um, yeah. So you also notice that I mess up, um, which is fine. I mean, it's practice and forgiving yourself is part of that practice. Um, but then you continue doing what you're doing. Eventually, I get the hang of it. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm using you know, all sides of my feet, inside, outside of my foot, I'm receiving with both feet, really challenging myself to, to get better, uh, which 
which is, is, is what you have to do really. Like I said, man, it's, it's very tiring, um, but it's so good, it's so good because if you can maintain that same level uh, once you get tired, even better because it's just like the game. Uh, the next part that I usually do is um, I actually play it off the wall. So the best time to test your touch is when you are tired. Um, so playing the ball off the wall, taking three touches, four touches, five touches, depending on what you want to challenge yourself to do uh, is a really good exercise if you want to get to used to uh, receiving the ball out of the air um, and just your general you know, touch of the ball, you're receiving it from different angles, you're using different parts of your foot, um, yeah, it's, it's a great exercise. Then you might want to challenge yourself. Um, instead of saying, you know, you're going to take three touches once it comes off the wall, say you're going to take two, which is not easy. I know I make it look extremely easy, but this is after years of practice and <laughs> just messing. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's not as easy as, as it seems, because especially when you're tired. Then lastly, if you know you really want to test yourself, you can try one touch, which is <laughs> not as easy. Uh, but yeah, you get the idea. Then lastly, before you leave, you know, you try and do a cool down. Some static stretches are fine. Um, and yeah, that's really the whole workout. Um, I guess the basics to take from this are if you want to get better at football, play football. Um, Yes, you can go to the gym, you can go running, you can juggle the ball, but uh, the only way you get better at, at football actions is to do more football actions um, at a higher tempo, at a better speed, um, you know, with better direction. Um, those are the things that matter, and those are the things that are going to reflect on the field. So that's my challenge to you guys. Find a wall. You don't even need the cones. You know, Use a shoe or something. Uh, get your ball and get better uh, Cool Thanks for taking 12 minutes to To watch this video. 